Now, what was I doing outside wandering around with my GPS receiver in such an odd sort of fashion? Looked like I was backing up, backtracking, and, and drawing shapes or something like that. Well, that's exactly what I was doing. I was actually drawing some letters with my GPS receiver using the track function in my GPS. In this segment, what I'd like to discuss with you all is to, um, is basically to introduce you to the topic of drawing things with your GPS. Why would I want to do that? What merit does it have in educational contexts? So we'll chat about that. Hi. Most of us at one time in our lives, we've probably drawn shapes or letters in a garden or in the sand, at the beach for example. Have you ever tried to draw with your GPS receiver though? As you probably are aware, almost all GPS receivers record a track of your position. This is analogous to dropping little breadcrumbs along as you walk along. You can make all kinds of different shapes with a GPS receiver. Could be letters, could be circles, could be squares, or whatever. Begin by an analyzing uh, some websites that show some GPS track results. For example, on gpsdrawing.com. You can look at contributions, for example, from OpenStreetMap. These are essentially GPS tracks that are collected for trails and streets all around the world. One of the earliest GPS drawings I ever saw was about a decade ago, and someone had drawn letters, IF, I don't know why, but IF, in England, on top of a map. Well, okay, these letters were huge, though. They were about 300 kilometers from north to south. So they were enormous, and it required quite a bit of forethought to get these shapes exactly right before the person went out with the GPS receiver. Also, take a look at this, Atlas of the Habitual, which tracks one person's movement over 200 days. When you return from the field, you can upload your tracks into your GIS. It turns out that's quite easy to do. For example, you can use ArcGIS to upload your coordinates from your GPS track. Then you can use a base map, one of many base maps available in ArcGIS, to put a, some sort of base image behind it, whether a satellite image, a topographic map, a street map, or whatever. Take a look at this session that I drew. I was out there with a group of teachers, and we were conducting a GIS professional development workshop. And I wanted to draw something with my GPS, so I drew this shape. I bet you can tell what the letters say. I drew the words G GIS with my receiver. I often include GPS drawing while working with teachers and students, and I encourage you to do the same. And the reasons why are several. Drawing with GPS forces us to think about spatial relationships. We must be aware of where we've walked, where we need to walk, and how large to make whatever shapes we're drawing. We also must be aware of local landmarks. Let's say we want to draw a certain shape and there's a building in the way. We have to make adjustments. How can I walk, if I'm doing letters, for example, how can I walk so that each letter is shaped correctly and also is distinct from other letters and is aligned so that the word lies on maybe an east-west axis? In the example that I just showed you, because the streets on the Colorado Community College system were aligned northwest to southeast, I had to be careful not to follow the street grid, but I had to cut diagonally across lawns for optimal results. And I wasn't perfect. How could I have done better? How does changing the track setting from distance to time, for example, or changing the distance or time interval between recorded track points alter the appearance of the letters? For added interest, have students draw their first or last name. That's always fun because they have to, again, think about it up here before they do it with the GPS receiver. The idea behind this Atlas of the Habitual is to document every place you've been for, in this case, 200 days. Here's the commuting pattern of this particular individual. And by time, here's his track in December, January, February, March, weekends. He definitely got out more, didn't he? Weekdays. Exploring. Here's where he was at 527 p.m. every day for 200 days. And when it rained or snowed. Lots of different options here exist for analysis. 
lots of these sorts of tracks exist on a site called GPS Drawing. And remember that GPS Drawing is just one of dozens, if not hundreds, of sites showing tracks. Let's take a look at the gallery here. This person made a 3D drawing, sort of an oblique view. Here it is in 2D, in a field. 3D. You can see that the person was actually in a field being grazed by cattle. Someone else drew an elephant in Brighton in the UK. Here's what the elephant looks like with a satellite image base. And here it is again with a street map. Here's the trunk. So get creative with these. Lots of possibilities exist here. And they can be at different scales, too. They don't have to be covering a whole city or a whole field. Could just be the school campus where you're located. At some point, you'll be up against the XY positional accuracy of your GPS. If you make the shapes or letters too small in area, there won't be enough track points dropped because you won't have covered enough ground physically for it to actually record. And so your shapes will be compromised. That's another good teachable moment. What shapes would you like to draw with your GPS?